we should be in Acts chapter 10. Okay, we studied Acts 10 uh, when we were in the second service two Sundays ago when we were talking about the uh, alms giving of Colinius and his prayer. How it came up to God as a memorial. Do you still remember? So today we are still in Acts 10. So let's take, let's let's tie to it wisdom from Acts of the Apostles chapter 10 B. Chapter 10 B. Chapter 10 B. Hallelujah. Let's bow down our heads and let's pray. Father in Jesus name, we trust you again for word from your throne. Father speak to us. Give us deep understanding that at the end of today we all shall return home with joy in Jesus name and amen I pray that as we work for the Lord may we be rewarded you know God in scriptures is a rewarder of them that does what diligently seek him I want to feel tara tara and the word seek there is those that are diligently committed to him so let's go to Acts chapter 10 I will have read the whole chapter but there won't be time come down a little bit it's too loud there won't be time so we are instead of reading the whole chapter we are going to read verse 1 to 8 to open up the teaching for today I'll take verse 1 you take verse 2 Till, till we get to verse 8. So Acts chapter 10 from verse 1 to verse 8. Let's rise up on our feet so that we can read together. Acts chapter 10. Join us here. Acts chapter 10. I'll read verse 1. You read verse 2. Thank you. It's on screen. There was a certain man in Caesarea called Colinius, a centurion of the band called the Italian band. Now you read verse 2. One, two, and let's go. Is it there? Let's go. A devout man and one that feared God with all his house who gave much alms to the poor, uh, to the people, and prayed to God always. He saw, a vision, he saw in a vision, evidently, about the ninth hour of the day, an angel of God coming in to him and saying unto him, Colinius. Now you read verse 4, let's go. And when he looked on him, he was afraid and said, what is it, Lord? And he said unto him, Thy prayers and thy arms are come up for a memorial before God. I read verse 5. And now send men to Joppa and call for one Simeon, whose surname is Peter. Now you read verse 6. Let's go. He lodged with one Simeon, a turner, whose house is by the seaside. He shall tell thee what thou oughtest to do. I read 7. And when the angel which, had, which spake unto Colinius was departed, he called two of his household servants, a devout soldier, of them that waited upon him continually. Let's read verse 9. Can we have 9? Okay, sorry, verse 8. Have we said? Let's go. And when he had declared all these things unto them, he sent them to Joppa. Now, let's take our seats. Now, this powerful scripture will open us up uh, to what we are to study today. Let's not forget, the man got a vision while he was praying. He saw that an angel came to him and the angel said, I said, let's move like this. The angel said, let's, let's concentrate. If you are in a bus 
or you are in a plane and they tell you to sit like this, you will move now. So if they tell you to move like this in church, you have to move as well. You don't determine your class, your chair, your, where you sit in your class. Or are you the one that determine that? Eh? If our ushers are doing what they are supposed to do, you are not supposed to be there when others are here. So let's begin. You know, this we have started a new era in our church. Let's begin to follow order. Let the ushers lead you. If you feel that there is fan there, there's no. You can tell your daddy buy one fan to put beside you here. Eh, Abi, and you begin to live inside the fan. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So let's go to the message. You know, the angel appeared to him, and the angel told him that there is there's something you ought to know. If you pay attention to what he said, it's still too loud. There's something you ought to know. Now, that was the instruction. There's something you ought to know. Now, and instantly he came out of that vision. He sent some of his soldiers to go search for Simeon called Peter. Now, and when Peter came, I'm summarizing the whole chapter to you. Peter ministered salvation. Talked about Jesus to, to them to him and his family, talked about what Jesus came to do, you know, and while he was preaching to them, the Bible says the Holy Ghost came upon them. Now, and as the Holy Ghost came upon them, Peter said, no one should be able to stop them from being baptized. Now that they have access to the same gift of God that we have, and since God gave them, the Gentiles, this gift, let's baptize them now. And instantly they were baptized. Now, the question I want us to treat this morning. Now, what's the question? I wrote it down here and I want us to see it. Does it mean that a person can walk, hear me, in the fear of God and be nice to people and still not be born again? Now, write that question down. You will still need to go through it later in life. Now, does it mean that a person can walk in the fear of God and be nice to people and still not be born again? Now, because if you look at what we have read, the Bible says, Colinius was a man that feared God. Now, the Bible also shows us that Colinius was a man that gave arms to the poor, to people. When he sees that people had need, he, he, he was ministering to people's need. But an angel here to meet him and said to him, there's something you ought to know that all these your good works, that all this your attitude of the fear of God, there's something you still ought to know. Praise the Lord. That's why he's leading us to that question. And I want you to think about that question very well because I believe so many people believe that, well, as long as I have what I call a perfect moral standard. You know, there are people like that. Have you not met some Muslims that are perfect when it comes to moral standard? I've met some. They are nice. They are good. They don't do what is negative. They are always living right. But do you know that upon all these things that Colinius was doing, the angel said to him, yes, your offering has come up to God. <laughs> Send for this man. His name is Peter. His name is Simon. His son's name is Peter. There's something you ought to know. And I told you when Peter came, he ministered to him. The Holy Ghost came upon them. They were baptized, which means he gave his life to Christ. So what is the answer to this question? What's the question again? Does it mean that a person can walk in the fear of God? Now, I now put in brackets, maintain a perfect moral standard and be nice to people and still not be born again. The answer is yes. A person can have a perfect moral standard. A person can be so nice that he gives even all he has. I could remember I, I was going through the history of Oni and Sons. They said the owner of Oni and Sons, when he was dying, he made a will. And in his will, he said he's donating that hospital to the government. A person can be a giver and still not be born again. A person can be nice and still not be born again. A person can have perfect moral standard and still not be born again. Now, we are going somewhere. We are going somewhere. Let me read my notes. This was the class of Colinius. Listen, 
he demonstrated a perfect moral standard. He was nice to people, yet he was not born again. And I wrote here, listen, if perfect moral standard and being nice to people is what God wants from us, listen, God will not need to send Peter to go and talk to Cornelius and his house about salvation. Because I know some of you, you say, ah, that man is nice. Ah, ah, in fact, I've had people say that, in fact, there are some people that are better than some of our born-again Christians. Have you not heard that before? I've heard it severally. That these people will make heaven ahead of... No, listen, if you don't give your life to Christ, accept what Jesus brought, you can't make any heaven. Now, let's go deeper into the answers for this morning. Praise the Lord. I didn't hear you. I wrote here, sin is too loud. If a demonstration of a perfect moral standard and be nice to people is what God wants from us, then what Peter was instructed to do would not have been necessary. Have you not heard people boast about their moral life? When they go out for evangelism, I've met people like that when I go for evangelism. When the pastor, me o payo, me o baya oni yawo, me o sheke, kile tuwa nsofu me. You know, I've met people like that. But listen to the standard of God. Listen to the standard of God, beloved. It is not possible for you to be right with God without salvation. Take note. It is not possible for you to be right with God. I'm going to tell you why I'm teaching you this. Because some of you are saying, I'm a minister. Why is pastor taking us back to foundation? It is not possible. It is not possible to be right with God without salvation. If you do not accept what Jesus brought to you, there is no how you can be right with God. Jesus came to die for something. And that's something, until you accept it, forget it, you are not going to be right with God. No matter how perfect your moral standard is, no matter even if you like, give everything you own to help humanity. You will not be right with God. We gain access to relationship with God based on the price of Jesus. So let me ask another question. What did Jesus bring to us? What did Jesus bring to us? Romans chapter 5, verse 10 to verse 15. Romans chapter 5, from verse 10. To verse 15. Romans chapter 5 from verse 10 to verse 15. My monitor is not clear. Romans chapter 5 from verse 10 to verse 15. Now I read. Let's look at it. It says, For if when we were enemies, hear me, we were reconciled to God by the death of his son, much more being reconciled. We shall be saved by his life. Not, and not only so, but also joy in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom we have received the atonement. Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin, and so the death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned, for unto, until the Lord sin, sin was in the world. But sin is not imputed when there was no law. Nevertheless, death reigned from Adam to Moses. Even over them that had not sinned after the similitude of Adam's transgression. Who is the figure of him that was to come? Verse 15. But not as the offense, so also is the free gift. For if through the offense of one, one many be dead, much more the grace of God and the gift by grace, which is by one man. Now, what is this? What did Jesus come to give us? What did his death brought to us? There are five things I want to show you. Let's take them one after the other. The first thing Jesus died to do was to give us access to forgiveness. That's why, see, the moment you are born again, you become forgiven. Whatsoever is in your past, Hear me, whatsoever you have done, the moment you give your life to Jesus, 
goes with your past. The blood of Jesus washes those things away. So what's the first thing Jesus came to give us that we must accept? We must accept that we are forgiven. I come again. We must accept that what? We are forgiven. Now, everyone that is a child must accept it. So many people are just going to church. They don't understand these things. That's why you hear a child of God, you still be praying, God, please forgive me for my parents' sin. Every sin of my father that, has put, that is putting me in trouble today. That was before you were born again. And some, we, some are born again. They are saying, ah, Lord, if it is the sins of my past that is making me I suffer what I'm suffering now, the sins of your past is gone. If you are born again, say, I'm forgiven. You must accept the gift of Christ. That's a gift that Jesus gave us by his blood. That's why, see, you cannot talk about, you cannot talk, say, say, I have perfect moral standard. You have not met Jesus. Whoever has not met Jesus has not accepted the gift of God. Haven't you seen that in some religion, somebody is dead and they will cause some people to be praying for his, the, this, the, somebody that is already dead. One year after, they will say, let's gather. We want to pray for, his, for God to for The man that is already gone. Accept the first major prize. And what's the first major prize? To give us forgiveness. Hear me. It, will now, it now led to number two. When he gave us, the first prize he paid was to give forgiveness. Number two, he gave us his righteousness. The righteousness of Christ that will make the Holy Spirit to be able to dwell in us. When he died, don't forget, he gave forgiveness. Number two, he gave us righteousness. The moment you become born again, you are complete in God. Now that's why the Holy Ghost can come in you. That's why the Holy Ghost can come inside of you and dwell in you. You have the gift of his righteousness. Hello? I didn't hear, hello? That's why you didn't do anything than to accept Christ to be saved. That sound, are you sure it's not going to affect our recording? That sound. That sound. You can remove that sound completely. He has the, you, have the, you have access to the gift of, you have access to the gift of righteousness. You have access to the gift of righteousness. It is by that gift of righteousness that you have the Holy Ghost. Remove it completely. Let's, let's go. Remove that sound. Now, and this gift of righteousness cannot be given if you did not accept Christ. He didn't now stop there. Number three, he gave us access to have an active relationship with God by his word. Now, after you are born again, your sins is forgiven. Number two, you have gift of righteousness. Number three, you have access to active relationship with God by his word. So every time you open the Bible to study, every time you sit down to listen to the word of God, God can speak to you. Do you know why? Because Jesus paid the price to make you a son. You are not a slave. You are a son of God. I'm going somewhere. There's a question I'm going to ask, but I want you to get these truths first. That's why you see that upon all the perfect moral life of, uh, of Colinius, he still had to give his life to Christ. Because your perfect moral life is not enough. So, salvation in Christ makes you a child of God. I come again. Salvation in Christ makes you a child of God. That's why you can hear God's voice. He's your, he becomes your father. You can hear God's voice. He becomes your father. You can hear God's voice. He becomes your father. God can hear your voice because you are his son. But before you were saved, you don't have that access. Hallelujah. Now, and as a son of God, hear me, you no longer serve God in fear. You serve him in love. You know what it means to serve God in fear? You know, a, a, a child of the house, I remember there was a time we had a house help in our house. 
you know, she lived with us for like two years or so. When we first brought this girl in, we told her, give her a room, that's your room. So when you want to eat, you come to the sitting room, then later you go to your room. I was shocked. When I came back to the sitting room, food had been prepared in, in the kitchen. She went to carry her own food. She now went to sit in between the door that leads to the kitchen and to the sitting room. She sat on the floor at the entrance of the door of the kitchen and she was eating. Ah. When I saw her, her name is Grace. I said, Grace, what happened? Stand up. Now, why, where she sat, my children were already seated on the, on the couch. All of them sat down. They don't, they don't know how to use, they don't like using the dining. So I had to, if I were dining, we had to remove it and go and keep it somewhere. Because even me, myself, I don't, I don't know how to use it. So, I now thought, stand up. Sit down with the children now. So when she, uh, after a lot, uh, shouting at her, she carried her plate. Listen, she now went to sit at the edge of the chair. They are not sure whether if they belch, God will be angry. They are not sure whether if they yawn, oh, God will be angry. Now it's because they don't understand that we have access to relationship with God by what? By salvation. As time went on, I discovered that she started changing, you know, and she started blending. There was this particular day, I went, I, I went out, came back, bought suya for the family. She said she had never eaten it before. She had worked with places where they cook, they buy the thing, bring home. But they are, she dare not come near. She will be watching them eat. I remember one of her birthdays before she left. She didn't know her birthday, so my wife asked her, We've celebrated my first daughter's birthday, celebrated the second one, we celebrated all your last birthday. So we're now asking her, which one is your? He said she doesn't know her birthday. So my, mother, my wife gave her one day. Took her to the market, bought dress for her, took her to her, her food co, bought gifts for her, bought cake for her. She was shocked. Eh? Can this ever happen? God is your father. Are you born again? God is your father. You don't serve him in fear. You serve him in love. Yesterday, Uriola clocked 11 years. And we woke him up with a song. While we were singing, he said, Daddy, today's my birthday. You know, today's my birthday. You have to pamper me today. You have to give me everything I want today. I said, okay, what do you want? He said, I want your phone today. I said, I can't give you my phone. He went to the mommy. Mommy, you know, today's my birthday. Anything I ask for, you must give me. The mommy said, yes, I want your phone. I want to play game with your phone throughout today. He was free to ask. Will a slave do that? Stop serving God like a slave. Listen, the relationship that Jesus died to give you with God is a father-to-son relationship. It is not a boss to staff relationship. It is not a master to slave relationship. What's the kind of relationship? It's a God to, to uh, father to son. That's why when the disciples of Jesus came to Jesus, they asked him a question. Master, uh, uh, teacher, teacher, we have always had you praying. Teach us how to pray. How did he tell them to start? Heavenly Father. I believe the disciples too will be shocked. Under the law of Moses, we don't address God as Father. We're in a different era. Say, God is my Father, John. Now, let me show you an example of serving God in fear. Look at Job. The Bible says he will wake up, wake up in the morning, he will make sacrifices to God, and he will make it on behalf of his children, saying, I don't know. In case they, may, they might have sinned against God, let me make this. You see fear on the, in the air. So the third thing you have access to by salvation is what? An active relationship with God by his word. An active relationship with God by his word. 
So you study his word, you understand his word. You, you hear him preach, you hear the word of God being preached, you hear God speak to you. Number four, what's the fourth thing that salvation gives us? It gives us grace. Grace. So as to find it easy to live the God kind of life. Grace. To find it easy to live the God kind of life. We'll look at Colossians chapter 3 verse Colossians chapter 1 21 to 23. You know so many people don't believe that it is possible to live right. You know the other time I talked about the gift of righteousness. Ah, Jesus gave us the gift of righteousness. Now the gift of righteousness we have received does not mean we are just going to live on that gift. No. There's a life of God. Now, let's read uh, Colossians chapter 1. From verse 21. On, I read. And you that were one time alienated right, and enemies in your mind by wicked works. You were not, sorry, yet now had been reconciled. Wait for me. That before, by your wicked works, the kind of things you did before, you were enemies to God. But look at verse 21. 22, sorry. In the body of his flesh, through death, to present you holy and unblameable and unreprovable in his sight. If you continue, can you see? This is where some people will stop at 22. He has made us, he has made us unblameable. But the condition is in verse 3. You also have something to do. If you continue in the faith grounded and settled and be not moved away from the hope of the gospel. Now, what did Jesus also die to do? He died to give us grace. Grace for what? Grace to live the God kind of life. That's why you see that after you gave your life to Christ, it became easy for you to live some kind of things. I know who I used to be before I became born again. I know the kind of life I was living before I became born again. But the moment I gave my life to Christ, it was not difficult for me to turn. It was not, not difficult for me to go to my worldly friends, try to bring them to Jesus, and while they were not getting interested, I just turned back. It was, not, it was not difficult for me to turn away from the lifestyle. I've told you here before now. There was a time I had this lifestyle. I could not sleep if I didn't listen to blues music. So I went to get a whole cassette, 90 minutes cassette. Took it to the studio. Wrote the names of uh, songwriters and their songs. A DJ dubbed everything for me. So when I want to sleep, I'll just play the cassette. And the thing will be playing, be playing until I slept off. But when I got born again, I couldn't live my life like that. There's a reason why I'm teaching what I'm teaching. We'll get there. Listen, I wrote here. As you live the God life, you will now notice something will begin to show in your life. It is called the fruit of the spirit. As you live the God life, we are still under number four. So you now just begin to notice. You know what they call the fruit of the Holy Spirit? You know there are nine. It's different from the gift. Now, the fruit is the sign that shows that you are yielding your life to the leading of the Holy Spirit. We are going somewhere. Then number five. He died to give, to make, give us access to receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Now, don't forget the Holy Spirit has been received under point, th point two. Then his gifts, the Holy Ghost also have gifts. You cannot have access to these gifts if you don't have an encounter of salvation. Do you understand what I'm teaching you? Now, why, I now, why am I now teaching what I'm teaching you today? I put it under error today. Someone said he was called from the womb. And they went to learn ministry like trade 
and have been a minister since then. Sir, is it biblical? Shall I come again? In your the one only, sir, I think you know your Lord will me. Can to die in a mutig bop way. My can to die. But they should be me by one moment be Samuel. One of them is a bear and a shell on a con. Moko share and a shell a bear. Most things she share will lead Latin by him. Is it biblical? Now, that's the reason why I started where I started from. Don't forget, Colinius was what? A good man. Now, don't forget, Colinius was a giver. Don't forget, Colinius had the fear of God. But Colinius had not encountered salvation. Now, the same way I want to tell you now, it is not possible to work for God if you have not had the salvation call. To bati boy pe dala, o le boy pe share ron share. A man of God, one of my friends, he called me, says, sir, pastor, do you know so, so, and so, reverend? I said, I know him. He said, I want to take one of my sons to go and learn ministry under him. Maybe some of you don't know that they learn ministry now. One could be a share weather. Be share carpenter. But I'm trying to show you something here. Child of God, before you will answer the call of ministry, you must first answer the call of salvation. Are you born again yet? God's salvation call is the first call you should answer before any other call. Let's go to Acts chapter 9. Acts chapter 9. From verse 1. Labor so tired as king. And Saul, yet breathing out threatenings and slaughters, slaughter against the disciples of the Lord, went out unto the high went unto the high priest and desired of him letters to Damascus, to the synagogue, that he sorry, that if he found any of this way, whether they were men or women he might bring them bound unto Jerusalem. And as he journeyed, he came near Damascus, and suddenly there shined round about him a light from heaven. And he fell to the earth and heard a voice saying unto him, Saul, Saul, why persecuted thou me? Verse 5. And he said, Who art thou, Lord? Listen. And the Lord said, I am Jesus, whom thou persecutest. It is hard for thee to kick against the pricks. Verse 9. And he, trembling and astonished, said, Lord, what wilt thou have me to do? And the Lord said to him, Arise and go into the city, and it shall be told thee. Now look up. What call was the first call? That he, had, that he received. It was a call of salvation first. He didn't just stand up and say, if you read his letters, he will say, a ministry that I have been predestined for. But he didn't enter the plan of God until he first entered the plan of salvation. Look up. So that's the same thing. Until you attend to the salvation call, there is no how you will enter into his plan for your life. Oh, le wo ipinu Olorun fun aye ire to ba ti ikoko wo ipinu re fun igbala. That's why we have so many titled ministers today. You know why most ministers are misbehaving? Go and find out. Where did you give your life to Christ? A lot of people do not have a record of either a day or a date that they will say they gave their life to Christ. I don't introduce myself as a pastor first. I, I always say I'm a born again Christian. 
that I'm a pastor is not a gateway to heaven. Now, when you have access to salvation, you will experience the first five things I told you. What's number one? Forgiveness of sins. What's number two? You have access to the righteousness of Christ. What's number three? An active relationship with God by his word. You can't have an active relationship with God by his word and not grow in the fruit of the spirit. Could possible I lie? I come again. You can't have an active relationship with God and not grow in the fruit of the... It's not possible, sir. Do you know why? The word of God is God's ingredients to transform our life. That's why at times you hear some messages, it looks as if somebody went to report you to the pastor. In fact, some people will even be angry with the pastor after a church service. It has happened to me several times. That some people will even decide not to greet me again. Uh, what did I do? I'm not the writer of the Bible. Why? Because the word of God is God's ingredient. Sir, servants of God, I'm talking to workers. Please don't come into ministry if your salvation issue is not yet settled. Or else, you will operate by a strange spirit. So Paul, Saul, that later became Paul, he had conversion experience first. Let's move on. I wrote here, if you don't follow it like the like the way Saul followed it, you will miss it along the line. Because you will not have access to the Holy Spirit. Let's look at the, the, the experience of Colinius in Acts chapter 11. Acts 11, 13 to 15. Acts 11, from verse 13 to verse 15. Acts 11, 13. Are you there? Yeah. And he showed us how he had seen an angel. He was talking about Colinus here in his house. Which stood and said unto him, Send men to Joppa and call for Simeon, whose surname is Peter, who shall tell thee words whereby thou and thy, thy house shall be what? I didn't hear you. You didn't hear me. I didn't hear you. Shall be what? Now, which means when he was doing all those good arms, he was not saved. Hello? Which means when he was demonstrating the fear of God, he was not saved. A person can be nice and not be born again. A person can be a giver and not be born again. And like I said, what makes you right with God is when you accept what Jesus brought to you. We are not yet true. Verse, what are we now? Verse 15. And as I began to speak, look at it. He said, the Holy Ghost fell on them as on us at the beginning. As I began to speak, that's why I want to ask every one of us, when did you give your life to Christ? How did you find your way into the workforce of the church. How? I gave my life to Christ October 1st, 1991. I had the word of God. I was touched. I asked Jesus to forgive me. I told him to come into my life. And when he came into my life, I had this inner satisfaction that my sins were forgiven. After it too, I had this inner confidence that I have the righteousness of Christ. Then I started the relationship with Jesus by his word. I was committed to that relationship. If I don't study the word any day, I feel that a part of me is not complete. That's why I understand what Jesus meant when he said, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that cometh out of the mouth of the Father. Because even when, I, when I've eaten rice, I've eaten fufu, I've eaten, I've eaten yam, I still feel a vacuum. 
when I've not studied the word. Can I tell you this truth? The problem we have in the body of Christ today is ministers that found their way into ministry without first going through salvation. That's why I don't agree with all those churches where you see that they will put children on the altar and the children will be prophesying. No, say, look at that seven years old, seven years old, anointed man of God, anointed man of God, and he will look at you, he look at you, and look at you, and say, Your name is Kunle Akire. You say, Hey, my son is 11, he speaks in tongues, he's not yet born again. Oriola, are you born again? He's not yet born again. He's only speaking in tongues that he had his sisters speaking. At times he will even come to me and say, Daddy, I want to speak in tongues before you. You are not born again. You just can't. <laughs> At times I share with him how he led his sisters to Christ. That I'm only waiting for you to be convinced. I will get to you to a point. He has the fear of God. If I teach anything in church, he'll come home to ask. But he is yet to understand what it means to be born again. Shaike, no man, Philip Wabi. Does he mean he's born again? <laughs> they are group. They started early with tongues. You be talking to him like that. Are you learning something at all? That's why, see, I'm not using this to mock you. If you are a minister in our church, you are a worker in our church, you are a deacon or deaconess in our church, and you realize that there was no time in your life that you made your life, you, you made a decision to follow Jesus, you can make it today. Can I go on? I will, I will summarize with the second question. Second question. Then by what spirit did these people who do ministry or prophesy without being saved do so? Write it down. You meet all these things on your way. Grandma, you are welcome. God bless you. Man. Then by what spirit did these people who do ministry or prophesy without being saved do so? Acts of Apostles, chapter 16, from verse 16 to 19. Acts, chapter 16, 16 to 19. Acts, 16, 16 to 19. Let's read. And it came to pass, as we went to prayer, a damsel, a certain damsel, possessed with a what? A spirit of divination. Some versions we use familiar spirit. Met us. Who brought her masters much gain by soothsaying. The same followed Paul and us and cried saying, these men are the servants of the most high God which shew unto us the way of salvation. And he and this did she many days. But Paul, being grieved, thought and said to the Spirit, I command thee in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. And he came out the same hour. Now look up. Now, this lady prophesied by what? A familiar spirit. Now, if it was a spirit of God, Paul won't cast out that spirit now. And funny enough, the prophecy was accurate. I mean, it was accurate. These are servants of God. Were well, they not servants of God? This is to show you that, that a prophecy is accurate does not mean that the source is God. Because some of you are easily carried away. Once somebody succeeds to tell you your father's name, the name that nobody knows with you, in your secret name, you convince, hey, this is God. That prophecy is accurate does not make it God. Does not mean that the source is God. That a servant 
prophesies accurate prophecy does not make that servant the servant of God. The scripture just showed us that this lady prophesied by what? A familiar spirit. So stop being carried away. In fact, can I tell you this truth? This end time, the deception that the devil will use most is deception of vision and prophecy. Imagine somebody looks at you, looks at you, has not seen you before, and tell you, you have two children, madam. What will you say? Will you say no? Yes, sir. Your first child is a girl. Ah! The second one is a boy. You say, ah! You are thank God's evangelical mission. Ah! I see... I see you around already. Ah, ha! That's what you say, Abi. I see maca in your hands. Ma maca. You were using chalk before, but maca. Are you a teacher? Yeah! Is that not what you say? And what will you be shouting? You are a man of God, sir. You are a man of God, sir. You are a man of God, sir. This lady by a familiar spirit did the same thing. That's why, church of God, let's never get to a point in our life where we exalt gifts above deeds. Don't ever get to that point where we give more attention to gifts and not deeds. You know what Jesus said? He said, by their fruits, we shall know them, not by their gifts. I'm summarizing. What's the question we are treating? Then by what spirit did the people who do ministry or prophesy without being saved do so? The answer is clear. By a familiar spirit. God doesn't jump his program. Where, when, when did you give your life to Christ? Can you see how he had to take Colinius back? The angel came to him, Kali, your gift and your prayers has come as a memorial. Send now to Joppa. Ask for a man. His name is Simeon. His son's name is Peter. There are some things you ought to know. You know, my former landlord, when I was still a ten tenant, uh, you know, uh, that's, we used to call him Babao Nifadi, was a giver. When I say giver, a giver, but he was never born again. A giver, Baba and give. Imagine Bati Baba Feku, O Talie, O Kowil, Yetoma from church, O Tikosile, Koe Ku, Yetoma from Reverend, O Tikosibe. Anytime Toban Shi Bazani Catholic Church, Baba is number one. God now told me to go and preach to him. few weeks to his death I was in his house because he was doing all those things and was still humanizing sir you can't meet Jesus genuinely and continue in sin should I come again you can't meet Jesus possible So I got to his house that day and I started ministering salvation to him. And Baba said he wants to give his pastor of fire from Jesus. I lead him to I led him to Christ two weeks after he died. To servants of God. 
Let's go back and ask ourselves a simple question. When did I give my life to Christ? Because some of the things some of you are struggling with is strange to me. But I am a Christian. I am a You know, it's we own yeah, Emile. When we have pastors that still keep malice, Emi mo only be kuni be bila ya chile she. When we have pastors that they will lie and call it wisdom, and you be asking, sir, iro le pa me sir, ani wisdom ni. Holy Ghost, will, the way we gave our life to, are, are you understand what I'm saying? When we have pastors that we have, they, they have wife in the house and they are trying to keep a side chick and they still want to minister on the altar. It means something went wrong somewhere. You never answer that call. Because if you answer that call, those five things I told you will take place. Number one, you will realize that you are forgiven. Number two, you know that you have a gift of righteousness. Number three, there will be this hunger for you to maintain a relationship with God by his word. Number four, you will know that you have grace already to live the life of Christ that will now make the fruit of the spirit to manifest. Number five, then you begin to manifest the gift of the spirit. But if you jump course, you jump the salvation, you can't have that experience. So you, ministry will be even become business. Let me summarize with one story that Reverend Billy, uh, sorry, uh, Brother Billy Akoni, he said we shouldn't call him Reverend. I had this message many years ago. He said they went for, for mission work in the village. He said, and there was a church in the village. You now decide that, let me worship in this uh, church, in this village. He said they got to church, they were waiting for the vicar. That's the pastor, Anglican pastor in charge. Ibati vika made oti yo. Vika ti yo. Ah, ili ele mu mu tekwe. Mi mu we sabi zwa. Alu de manage ulo si biti. Vika de she sabi si two hours. Like she mistake. Belu bo she yo. O monti o nest. For service, Omo we only talk about she. Omo go into our lori. No one know we only. Oh, kola tori. You know, in in the Anglican session, all the scriptures they will read for the year, they have the outline. When he got to the point of reading the scripture, even in his drunkenness, he quoted it. As a finished service. He went to sit down. Reverend Billy said he now went to him and tried to talk to him. He said the man just started snoring. <laughs> he said that is when he knows that you can even do service without God. The master, are you hearing what I'm saying? That's if you wake them up now to preach two hours message without study, they can preach. Don't get to that point where you become a professional preacher. Our choir members are here. Don't get to that point where you become a professional singer. Uh, anytime the back with my corny and when you want your joke corny, the main thing is God glorified. Don't get to that point where you say, if they wake me up to lead prayer, ah, I want to lag, I want to pray, I want to sweat. Don't get to that point. Get to the point where you say, I am just, you know, I'm coming out of the presence of God this morning, and I want us to take this prayer point as I receive it from God's presence. Kai! That is what I'm saying. How many of you were on uh, online Shiloh yesterday? Or you watched it later? That was my morning devotion of 
Friday morning. Isaiah 14. On the official morning devotion, Lara of Friday. So I brought it to you on Saturday at Chilo. Please follow the process. If you have not answered the salvation call, I will give you the opportunity. But don't worry, I won't dismiss you. I won't even let you, you me, myself know that you are, you are part of them that received Jesus today. So I won't tell you to lift up your hand. But you know that you do not have a trace. You know, me, I just mentioned October 1st, 1991. If they ask you, when did you give your life to Christ? You cannot trace anything. You just found yourself in ministry. You just found yourself as a worker in church. You never made any decision to follow Jesus. Me, I made a decision. So when I'm singing that song, I've got my mind made up. I sing it confidently. And I won't turn back until I see my Jesus someday. I've got my mind made up. And I won't turn back until I'll see my Jesus someday. Goodbye, world. I'm staying no longer with you. Goodbye, players of sin. I'm staying no longer with you. I've made up my mind to follow God's will for the rest of my life. I've made up my mind to do God's will for the rest of my days. It was a decision I made. Hey, Joseph, decision here. Igba me gonna watch my wife so busy. Timmy T Kabai Bu in a day. I won't rest. Something in my body will be doing as if something is not complete. So I will have no choice than to go anywhere I find myself. I will go and look for a corner to I have not studied today. So please, can I lead you? So that we can start this close to this service, second service. And our, the newcomers that we want to celebrate today, we we'll welcome them in the new service. So bow down your heads, wherever you are. If you are making up your mind today that Jesus, I'm going to follow you, you just say this as I say it. Heavenly Father, I've come to realize that I'm not yet born again. I am like Colinius. I was involved in good works, but never had any encounter. But today, 4th of August, 2024, I make up my mind. I accept what Jesus did for me on the cross of Calvary. I believe that he rose on the third day. I believe I will see him again. Therefore, I accept him as my Lord and personal Savior. I have access to his forgiveness. I receive now the gift of his righteousness. I take my stand for relationship with you, O oh God, by your word. I have grace to live the God kind of life. I receive the gift of the Spirit. Today, I am born again. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. I congratulate you. I'm not looking up, so I didn't hear you. I don't know you. Because I know that it's an in-house meeting. But I'm happy for you that you made it, this decision today. So your work with Jesus has started. You know one of the things that we do to grow in our work with Jesus? Sacrifice. Push yourself. 
It's not going to be easy, but you push yourself. You wake up in the morning at times, you don't want to feel like studying. Push yourself. You don't, you don't feel like doing what is right. What is right is not easy to do. You push yourself until it becomes part of you because you already have grace for it. Glad? Let's rise upon your feet. If you are clapping for Jesus, clap for Jesus. <laughs> clap more, more for Jesus. Let's close this service. Today is anointing.